Hi, I'm Chris, and this is GGO. GGO, also known as Gun Game Online, is set in a dystopian future. Humanity is plagued with monsters. There are still some remaining cities powered by grit and a desire to exist. In these cities, there are some who choose to lead a peaceful life. For most, however, the cost of that life is too high. They hunt monsters to keep their city safe and to pick up some loot. This isn't, however, just another world of peaceful monster slaying. There are some who spend their days hunting other humans. PvP is a big portion of GGO, and the rewards for player killing are vast. For those that are more competitive, there are also battle royale tournaments. The treasures for winning such events helps to propel the victor forward on their quest to be number one. This game is rated teen for violence and explicit language. It falls into the genre blend of first person shooter and VR MMO. The audience for the game has the potential to expand, but the primary target will be mid in the 23 to 30 year old range. The perfect persona is someone who likes to play progressive games that also require physical skill. This age range of men are usually out of school and have the potential to be in comfortable careers. This allows them to devote large amounts of time to gaming, and this game will take time and effort for people to reach the top tiers. This is our gameplay loop for the game. Core actions in the game are shooting, moving, and interacting. Players will be able to shoot monsters in PvE and PvP zones and shoot other players in the PvP zones or the Battle Royale. The players will be able to walk, jump, and climb. They will also be able to interact with shops, a gun range, a storage unit, and loot chests. The main goal of GGO is to rise to the top of the ranks and dominate the Battle Royales. This is achieved by the sub-goals of getting good with VR weapons, leveling up, and getting good gear. Moment to moment, GGO is a battle for survival. Once a player leaves the city gates, their security is always in question. There will be controller haptic feedback on weapon firing, UI interaction, and picking up new objects. Audio feedback from those interactions will occur as well. There will be voice interactions between players, and this will be replicated using 3D spatial audio. Visual feedback will only be given through direct world and UI interactions. The platform for release will be PC VR with controller mapping set for the Open XR framework. The color scheme will follow the pattern of the hit show GGO. A big reason people will get hooked is that in future updates, the plan of the game is to have a real world economy, providing the best players an opportunity to make a living playing the game. Now we're generous in our after our first episode to receive some questions uh, from the viewers. Uh, first one being, can someone who enjoys only PVE still enjoy this game, or will PVP be a major focus? Uh, the answer to that is PVP will be a really big focus. But with any open world MMO, there will be a lot of players who just like to grind axe, seek loot, levels, and that's also okay. Next question we got was, how much does being able to aim a gun in the real world translate into the game? So the answer for that, uh, aiming is going to be very much real world skill related. Some games choose to make things easier on players, but as an avid VR consumer myself, I found that even though it's really tough, games with real world shooting draw huge crowds. Examples of that include Population 1, Pavlov, and Onward. Next question we got was, what prevents a high-level player from gawking low-level players? I actually had to Google gawking, uh, but the answer is nothing. Uh, if low-level players enter the PvP zone, uh, they're actually fair game. So the next question we got was, what happens if I die repeatedly and lose all my credits? Do I have a recourse to gain credits back? Uh, so the answer to that is, you don't actually lose any credits. Um, you only lose backpack items, 
and that only occurs if you die in a PvP zone. Uh, there will also be a beginner weapon and beginner gear set that a player will revert to if for some reason they sell all of their items or lose them somehow. Will there be any sort of item crafting? Uh, no, there won't be any sort of item crafting. So the next question we got was, with regards to the real world economy, how would the foundation for the real world economy be implemented and supported? That's a good question. Um, so the answer is the real world economy feature is future deck. So it'll be a research project all of its own. Um, pay to win kills tons of games, um, but someone's got to get it right. Otherwise, we'll, people will just continue to think it's a bad idea and we'll never find a path forward. Do items respawn in the world after a set period is the next question. Um, so the answer to that, in the beginning, there won't actually be items that spawn in the world, uh, like loot items. These will uh, likely change when the game gets uh, cave systems implemented but in the beginning, the only way to receive new loot will be killing monsters, killing other players, winning battles, or purchasing from the shop. Is there a ranking system or a ladder system is the next question. Uh, the answer to that is the only ranking is the winners of the battle royale. Uh, how do I gain skill points and stat, po uh, skill points, and stat points? Uh, so yes, uh, skill points and stat points are included in the game. Uh, right now we're looking at agility, strength, and vitality. Um, these can be gained by killing other players or killing monsters. Uh, next question we got was, do I lose stat points, skill points, or experience upon death? Uh, the answer to that being no. Uh, there's no loss of skill, stat, level, or XP uh, when you die. Uh, the next question we got was, what role will sound play in VR? And that's a good question uh, as well. Um, sound does always play a pretty big role in VR, uh, but for this game there won't be a sound track. Uh, eventually players will have the ability to play music for themselves or for others in game, um, but we want immersion and having sound effects that are not present in the actual game world uh, can be annoying. Uh, next question we got was, can players set up shops to sell their items? Uh, no, there will not be any player shops. Um, and then the final question we got was a little bit longer. Uh, the presentation itself didn't state that the game would be held in the VR experience. Was VR the original intention behind the game? Um, so if you go back and watch the first episode, there was a slight mention of VR, but just for clarity, uh, the game will be exclusively uh, VR. So moving on with some more details, uh, we've got the theme of the game. Um, the theme is uh, that even though things may be bleak in the world, with hard work and a strong support structure, anyone has the potential to overcome. The mood is gritty and dark. The world is dusty and the sky always has a gray haze. This is uh, the mood of the game. It uh, very much draws on the anime GGO series and the look of the feel of the game will actually match that. The plot, uh, the backstory of the game is that monsters appears from a rift over 200 years ago. Uh, mankind has found a way to survive with technology, but as monsters uh, get stronger, heroes that can outmatch them are required. Um, there are many, however, who have lost faith in humanity, and they do also hunt their fellow man. Uh, so up next, we're going to look at some uh, general UI stuff that we've uh, started to implement, some mock-ups. Um, this is going to be the UI for the gun range. Uh, next we have our backpack uh, storage spots. This is a player card, so uh, the player will be able to see their stats and things like that in here, as well as adjust them when they get uh, stat points. This is the front menu for the uh, store. On the left it says buy and right it says sell. Those will essentially be um, you'll have a different menu below uh, based on whether you're in the buy or sell menu, but it'll look similar with the item and the cost, uh, so the item itself and then how much you can sell or buy it for, uh, as well as an exit button. And then uh, once you click on an item, though, you want to have uh, some additional information about it, whether you're buying or selling it, so that's the next menu. Uh, it's an additional description for each weapon, uh, and again, these are buy, sell, meaning that uh, this would be a different menu for buy, different menu for sell, so this, this is just the cover for that. 
gives a little bit of a description, uh, the item, uh, the cost of it, as well as um, some general uh, details. Also, let you go back and exit the menu. Next, we have our storage area. Uh, so this is the beginning menu, uh, kind of similar to the uh, purchase area. You, you can either store items here, retrieve them, or exit out of the menu itself, uh, exit out of the storage unit. And inside the storage unit, whether you're in store or retrieve, uh, you'll be able to hit a checkbox uh, next to items, uh, scroll down, um, and then either store or retrieve the item, as well as go back or exit. And this is our UI flowchart, how all the uh, UI interacts with one another. So for our core systems, uh, minimum necessary core systems for this game are going to be AWS dedicated server, full body IK character class, weapon mechanics, voice communication, health, damage, leveling system, cognito user pool, selling, buying, and inventory systems, world partition, as well as enemy AI mechanics. Uh, the core mechanics of the game, uh, or the breakdown, are as follows. Players will use smooth thumbstick locomotion and turning. Uh, the direction of movement will be HMD designated. Players will have the ability to move around in local space without controller input as well. Players can grab most loose objects in the game. This will be done with the bottom grab button on either controller. Uh, when the player's hand is overlapping the object. For weapons and tools, there will be a snap functionality that places the item into the appropriate position in the player's hand. Players can also grab items or put items into their backpack. By pulling it from behind their back and placing an item in or pulling one out. They also have a tool belt on their waist that allows them to put on new gear by overlapping the tool belt with the gear. They can also add a single weapon to the tool belt for quick access. Players will be able to jump. Uh, they can also grab certain walls and pull themselves up to higher areas. Players can fall from heights. Doing so will have impacts on the player's health. Players can shoot a gun that is in hand and has ammo loaded into it with the corresponding trigger button on the hand holding the gun. Guns require manual reloading. If a player has a gun in hand, they can eject or physically pull out the clip, depending on the type of gun. They can then grab the ammo slot on their tool belt. A magazine will go to their hand if they have ammo available. They can put the new clip into their weapon and chamber around. The map is broken into three zones, the city, the PVE zone, and the PVP zone. The city has buildings that the player cannot interact with, as well as three buildings they can. These include the storage area, the shop, and the battle royale arena. When a player interacts with the storage area, they can take items from their belt or backpack and put them into their storage. They can also retrieve items from the storage area and either put them in their backpack or on their belt. Players can buy and sell equipment at the shop. Players can challenge other players to one-on-one -on -one battles in the battle arena. Also have the opportunity to sign up and participate in larger tournaments there as well. The PvE zone contains low-level monsters that players can battle for experience points, credits, and loot. If a player dies in the PvE zone, they respawn back in the city with full health and all of their gear. The PvP zone contains higher-level monsters players can battle. This area also has player killing enabled. If a player dies in the PvP zone, they drop all the loot stored in their backpack and they respawn in the city with half health and only... Uh, their equipped items. When they die in this zone, a bag will be dropped at the location they died at, which contains all the loot they dropped. If they get to it first, they can claim all of their items. If another player finds a loot bag, they can take all of the items. Players will spawn in with a random character avatar. They will start at level 1 with 100 health points, no items, except their backpack containing 10 slots no stat points to spend, and no skill points allocated. They start with 1,000 credits. Practice shooting skill is going to be physical and based on player's real-world experience as well as in-game focus. Bullets will travel at real-world trajectories based on their weapon class. Non-real-world related skills in the game include strength. This allows players to equip heavier weapons and armor. Agility helps the player to move quickly around the map. It also makes a player jump higher. 
Vitality increases players' max health points. Now looking at level design, uh, this is a little bit of a uh, prototype for our level. Uh, it's designed to be open world, the level is. Uh, town is in the center, surrounded by a ring which contains the PvE zone, uh, indicated here by the lighter color. Beyond that, there's an outer ring, which is the PvP zone. You see different uh, P1, P2, P3, and P4. This area will be designed with extending its breadth uh, through future updates, making it wider. The city is uh, cyberpunk mechanical grunge. The streets are dirty and so are the buildings. The PvE area has some trees, some lakes, and a mountain range, but is mainly spotted with small bushes and open space. The PvP zone is a vast pink Himalayan salt-colored sand desert. There's rolling hills, vast flat areas, and cave systems. The technology being used to uh, complete this project are Unreal Engine, uh, the Unreal Engine Marketplace, as well as plugins, Houdini, AWS GameLift, Cognito, Lambda, API Gateway, Photoshop, 3ds Max, Visual Studio, Fork, GitHub, Postman, and references. Uh, pictures not cited are from Pexels, and uh, we do obviously re reference uh, Gungill online for the images as well as some details about the game itself.